Down. Um, I'm a bit speechless really, it's, um, it's a very strange experience, <laughs> it's hard to kind of, I guess, contextualise the last two weeks, um, feels like it's gone by pretty quickly, I don't think it has actually, uh, it's amazing to be here, uh, you know, the contrast from leaving St Malo, uh, actually for me, it's my third Atlantic crossing but it's only my first transatlantic race uh, obviously it was solo as well so uh, to have that experience and it's all, all a bit overwhelming you happy with your race though? Uh, yeah yeah I am uh, I've achieved what I wanted to achieve you know I said um, I'll be happy in the top 10 I'm in the top 10 firstly I'm happy to finish the race it was a tough race uh, we had three big depressions in the first week we really <laughs> took a kicking um, and then also you expect it to kind of get a bit easier into the trade winds and that really wasn't the case, it was breezy all the way it was, uh, I think a couple of days ago was the first day I had that it didn't average 20 knots and uh, the longest race I've done before this is 8 days so to do 18 <laughs> thank you um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pleased I'm very happy yeah, well you know the history of the boat uh, we've done a lot of work you know, I don't think it's luck that we've made it across this time uh, we focused in the right areas, we worked smart, we worked hard, and uh, yeah, I think this is our reward. Any nervous moments, any bad moments? Yeah, lots. <laughs> um, I, I struggled a bit with the first day, you know, leaving all the people, 
and then you kind of have this idea that you get on the boat and you start racing and you'll forget about everything and it will all be okay but it kind of sat over me for like a day I was quite nervous for the whole whole kind of first day of racing uh, but then I settled into it and then uh, yeah no big dramas I had a few small things break and you know, obviously coming off big waves in 50 knots is a novel experience uh, but took it in my stride and yeah enjoyed it you were a little bit on your own in terms of competitors in the end yeah I was that was a bit sad I think it, it made the um, you know the mental aspect a bit more of a learning curve because you haven't got another boat to focus on that's next to you the whole time uh, but in a way that's a good thing um, because it, it teaches you that to keep pushing you know without someone driving you on and I was able to do that so that was a good learning experience um, it would have been nice to be with the group in front of me but my strategy was always to take it easy in the first week to get the boat through uh, and to make sure we finished before uh, focusing on the result. And that's what I did. So hindsight is easy to say, you know, I would have pushed a bit harder and could have been up with those guys. But, uh, you know, I think for a, for a first try, lots of positives and ready, ready to come back and uh, improve. What's next then? <laughs> uh, good question. Um, uh, you know, I'll take stock of this first. I'm going to take the boat to Grenada and take her out the water so I can go home for a little bit. And then we'll do the round Barbados race in January. Uh, and then I look at my options next year. You know, the, the Vendée is always the target. Uh, so that's another Class 40 campaign, maybe a Figaro. It's all funding dependent, so working on that behind the scenes and uh, stay tuned. Good, good job, well done. Thanks, Sandy. <laughs> Je vous donne, je vous donne le force de la Guadeloupe. Merci. Bien vous avez terminé. Vous avez terminé. Merci.